What's going on folks, Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and it's Tuesday, so that means it's time for another top 10 video. I'll be honest with you, this was one of the hardest ones I had to do because it required a lot of brain power, a lot of remembering, and then uh, a lot of purchasing. So here we are. Uh, this, uh, my patrons voted, is my top 10 D&D 5e Adventure League modules. For those of you unaware, Adventures League is the organized play system for 5th edition. This is what you'd play at conventions, at local game stores, and there has been a season released for pretty much every hardcover book. They're currently in the process of what I believe is season 9, which is themed around Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus, and season 10 will be coming out, I think, later this year. There also is a slew of ones created for conventions, as well as created by the DMs Guild, and DMs Guild Adepts, rather, and a whole bunch of stuff, as well as a bunch by Baldwin Games, and a ton of things to go through. So what I did is I went back through all of my old Adventure League character sheets, tried to remember all of the fun adventures that I played that I had a lot of fun in, and then had to search them all out on the DMs Guild, and then from there, purchase them all, uh, the ones that I hadn't purchased already anyway, uh, and then bring them here to you. This is a little bit tricky because some of them were one-offs that I played at conventions, but hey, I was able to track them all down, thankfully. Uh, and as far as rules go, they have to be an official Adventure League module, but I also was eliminating all of the epics. For those of you unfamiliar, the epics are sort of a once a season thing that is a massive event that usually takes place at a convention with tons of tables, all getting a variety of different, uh, you know, modules and, and tasks and everybody sort of is competing, but you're also all working towards a larger goal and it's usually in a room with like 15 to 20 tables of seven people playing. So it's a crazy thing, and they're super fun. If the world ever returns to normal and we're able to do them again, I recommend you at least try one. But the problem is I'm not going to recommend them to all of you because you're not going to get the true experience by just playing it with a group of five people at home. Uh, so anyway, that's that. Let's dive in. And I feel like it goes without saying, but spoiler alert for any of the adventures here. So I realize that you may be saying, well, I don't know what they're going to go. They're all in the description with time codes, as well as chapters on the bottom. If you're ever going to play one of these, don't watch that part of the video because I will be talking about the adventure and in some cases about what the rewards are because some of them have really awesome, unique rewards that just make this that much more fun. Number 10. No foolish matter. This one comes to us from season three of the Adventures League. Reminder that this was out of the abyss or the Rage of Demons season. So you're going to have a lot dealing with, or at least parts dealing with that. You can see it's a best platinum seller. It is also on sale currently as part of the DMs Day sale. And it's only a buck 79 and it's got 30 ratings for four stars. So this adventure is going to deal with a creepy carnival. So it actually could fit very well in a Ravenloft campaign or in any kind of spooky horror campaign. I, I also will say I'll have DMs Guild affiliate links in the description below. What that means is if you do click any of those links and pick up the DM, or pick it up through that link, I get uh, a portion of that. So I benefit from that monetarily. Uh, but yeah, this is... It doesn't necessarily need to be tied into this whole Hillsfar campaign and things for the Adventures League. This could be easily put into your campaign. Like I said, you could make this a Vistani camp if you wanted. And it's basically spooky carnivals. You have creepy clowns. You have carnival rides. You have all sorts of crazy stuff. Uh, and the boss encounter at the end is genuinely unique for a, a tier one designed adventure giving, uh, giving lair actions to a, a you know, a tier one which is a level one to four adventure and uh it also it's again it's adventures league right so it's designed to be played in two hours but there are a ton of npcs and very interesting and unique npcs that if the party does want to role play and kind of see all of them this could easily be extended to three to four hours and again it's just a fun it also could be a completely standalone thing not tied to the campaign or maybe tied to some larger creepy aspect that you want to tie in later on Number nine, Raiders of the Twilight Marsh. This, as you can see, is a best adamantine seller on sale currently for two thirty nine, dollars with four and a half stars for 59 ratings. I have not personally played this one, but I have read through it, and a lot of people consider it to be one of, if not the best, 
module out there. Again, it's higher up on this list because I just don't have any personal experience with it. So this uh, is going to take place and obviously could interestingly enough be dropped into your Tyranny of Dragons campaign uh, and is about a black dragon. So lizard folk in the region have been decimated by, uh, and the area has been decimated by a black dragon that is basically known as Velvet. And so black velvet, clever, I know. Uh, but the lizard folk actually end up reaching out to you or the adventurers and party to say, hey, listen, we need help. We know that the dragon is out of its lair. Let's go prep it and let's take his treasure and we'll attack him when he comes back. But what they don't know is the dragon, which is very interesting for a tier two adventure, has been taking steps to become a Draco Lich. So that can be a very interesting and unique encounter that you will run. Also, interestingly enough, this originally came out, as you can see, on January of 2016. Robert Aducci, who is one of the people who wrote it back in August of 2018, actually added more content to it. So uh, again, as you can see, it was updated in August of 2018 and added in like a whole other encounter that was originally cut for time. And I guess the whole half dragon based encounter. So that's pretty cool to see updates over time. And hey, look, it does have a fantasy grounds version as well, if that's something that you use. And again, with the DMs Guild uh, DM day sale going on until the 14th, now's a great time to jump on this. Once again, affiliate DMs Guild links in the description below. Number eight. The Sword of Selfaril. This is a Season 2 module. So this was the Elemental Evil, uh, Princess of the Apocalypse campaign, a my best platinum seller, 4 to 5 stars with 27 ratings, and again, currently on sale uh, for $2.39. This is all about a magical sword, and it's sort of a almost like a King Arthur kind of a thing. Uh, it has basically uh, someone, a brother, deposed their brother of the throne but rather than killing them trapped them in a gem in a blade and through the courses of previous modules or for the purposes of this one if it if you're going to run it like it is the blade has been found and essentially the per the trapped uh brother in the blade is trying to break out and this can cause all sorts of issue because they're technically the right heir to kind of the throne and the local government and how does that inter interact with what's going on there also uh, it is very interesting because in theory this blade if you have it is a plus three blade but has some detractors to it so if one of your party members has it that could be an interesting time there's also a section where if he breaks out i like that the module says that selfril needs food badly so there's a gauntlet reference in there and if you've never met the mole master beholder core well, they have a reference in here as well. So there's a lot of good stuff to be had here. And it's just a good opportunity for role playing as well as some interesting tactical combat if you decide to go that route. Number seven. The Heir of Orcus. This one, I'll be honest, the box, as it were, the title cover here is what caught my attention. First of all, uh, Orcus, big baddie uh, of D&D. &D, and the fact that one, written by Anthony Joyce, someone that I know and has done great work in the DMs Guild or in D&D &D in general and before, and it uses, like it has a back of an NES cart description here, and it uses 16-bit maps, which is pretty awesome. So if you read the description here, it says, do you have what it takes to save an Angel of Tear? Your hands are not physically capable of rolling the dice needed to stay alive in this module. The Mephisto twins are seeking brave adventures to rescue a lost Angel of Tear from the Temple of Orcus. Are you brave enough to answer the call? Think quick and act fast, or you just might find yourself dead in a ditch down by the river as the rest of your party feasts in Mephisto Manor. Explore Devilish Mansion, blah, 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 blah. I played this uh, module and ended up on the 113th layer of the Abyss. It's that good, says main number 114. Uh, it is a best Electrum seller. It has four and a half stars for 43 ratings and came out back in 2018. Once again, also on sale for DM's Day, $3.57 for it. And it looks like it can be played in two to four hours. Uh, it says it's compatible with homebrew stuff as well. Uh, yes, it's played like it's 1990 and experienced the first Adventures League module to use 16-bit art for maps, tokens, NPC portraits, and magic items. Uh, I scrolled down and read through some of the different reviews, 
and everybody seems to be a pretty big fan of it. It seems like there's some interesting parts where you have to make up jokes and there's dragon chests and things associated with it. And what's also interesting is there's a verse two, verse three, and verse four, which came out back in February of 2020. So as it stands right now, there is four different continuations of this as time has gone on. And I think I see this last one here, something about Cthulhu. So it looks like, yeah, I guess so, right? You look at that, there's Cthulhu right there. So I guess it continues on. And who knows, it might not be the end of it. It might continue on even more. And this looks like it'll take you from tier one, possibly up to tier two, or at least these ones are tier two modules. Uh, and again, this last one looks like you can get it, uh, these last two, rather, you can get them in soft cover printed if you'd prefer uh plus yeah it just looks like a lot of fun the reviews uh, if you look at all of them four and a half five stars best electrum seller on two of them best silver on the other two and that can't be for nothing number six the beast this is a curse of strahd themed or ravenloft themed module from season four it's the best mithril seller 55 ratings for four and a half stars again currently on sale and this one as you could probably guess if we're in ravenloft and has the title of the beast we are talking about werewolves it's gonna actually provide you with a whole new location that you may not have been aware of this village of arasno i think is how you pronounce it uh and a woman, uh, and if, you're, if you've ever met Laszlo or know of Laszlo from Curse of Strahd or from other Adventure League adventures, he is present here as his, his wife, which I didn't know about. Uh, and she's got an interesting backstory. She is a werewolf, but there's a Vistani curse involved. It's a pretty interesting story and has some good role play and opportunities to both, again, end it with combat or to end it with role play, depending on how you go about it. And it is also... One of the only magic whips that you'll ever find. Unfortunately, it is just a whip of warning, but it does have some cool roleplay in that the pommel of the whip, I think, is an amber chunk with a moving eyeball inside it. So that's kind of fun. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's Ravenloft, so it's fun, and it's got spooky werewolf vibes. And they also have this other module here called The Beast Expanded. This one is free. You can pay for this, pay what you want here, um, but it's optional content. It actually gives you role play information. As it says right here, we explore the tiny mountain village of Erasno, the ominous Svalich uh, woods in Barovia, as well as the quivering forest in the Forgotten Realm. So it can get you some good background, some NPC summaries, story hooks and whatnot. So if you wanna expand out your, your Ravenloft or Curse of Strahd campaign, or just get some more knowledge about the quivering forest in the Forgotten Realms. This one, you don't have to pay anything for if you don't want to. And uh, you can get that, uh, again, it ties into this adventure if you have both, but you don't need to if you don't want to. Number five. The Eye of Zifu, I think is how it's pronounced. But this was basically the capstone adventure, if you will, for the fifth season. This is the Storm King's Thunder season of Adventures League. You can see this as four and a half stars for 46 ratings, best platinum seller currently on sale for $2.39. Also, if you're unfamiliar with the high level tier four adventures, this is for 17th to 20th level characters. So this is a pretty high level adventure and the stuff associated with it reflect that, right? This is all about an abolithic artifact, the Eye of Zifu, which is currently in the possession uh, of a Morkoth, but there are giants that are after it after the Ordening has been smashed trying to get it, and you are sent there by, you know, your contact to go get it first. So there is a ton of competition, a ton of high-level encounters, and it's pretty nutty because, like, Zifu was an abolithic uh, society that was destroyed long ago, but this eye is the sole remnant and this Morkoth gains it and it wants to, it's being consumed or converted by the eye and the eye wants it to rebuild Zifu as it was originally. And it's nutty. And the item, it's the eye of Zifu was actually a magic item. It was eventually removed from Adventures League, so you can't have it as an item, but I thought I'd show you what it does. Also, uh, you get the items, magic items in here are a Tome of Understanding, uh, and a staff of power, but the eye of Zifu itself is—it um, doesn't require attunement. 
It doesn't say it does, but I think it does eventually. It says, the attuned possessor of the eye gains telepathy out to a range of 120 feet and can cover themselves in a coat of mucus that allows them to breathe underwater as well as on land. This petrified orb is large and heavy, but does not need to be held to use its powers. Additionally, the owner of the eye and the, uh, while well, Abolus have disadvantage when attacking the owner of the eye, and the owner has advantage on ability checks in regards to knowledge-based ability checks about Abolus and the Far Realm when they are not in combat. So, and you can see right here all of the different creatures you'd have to encounter. It's pretty crazy, and... You know, it, it makes for an interesting 17th level to 20th level encounter. And it's definitely one of the better ones out there, and I definitely recommend you check it out if you're planning on running high-level D&D. Number four. The Artifact. This comes to us from, again, Season 4 of the Adventures League, so we're going back to Barovia and Curse of Strahd. This is a best Mithril seller, uh, four and a half stars for 30 ratings, currently on sale for $2.39. This is a tier two adventure, uh, and I really like this one because it actually expands upon the Amber Temple uh, a little bit. There, you basically find a whole unique section of the Amber Temple that is not originally described, or at least that's how I interpret it when I read it. It also dives a little bit more into some of the vestiges and some of like the broken Amber sarcophagi that you might have found. And it basically, un before all of that, that's basically just the end, but before all of that, it's like a very elaborate version of Clue and a kind of whodunit scenario. So if you're into that kind of stuff uh, and like murder mysteries and, and that kind of thing, this could definitely be the module for you. It also is a nice break from traditional Adventure League, which are very much combat driven. Not all the time, but a lot of Adventure League stuff is combat driven because you're only going to sit down for a short period of time. And if you're going to do that, they usually pack it with combat because that's how Adventures League is often directed because people build characters typically optimized for combat. But this kind of breaks that up a little bit. And I really enjoyed it personally. And I actually used a lot of the content for my homebrew campaign where the party was going to the Amber Temple. And I wanted to kind of expand it and add a little bit of uniqueness since two of my players had played Curse of Strahd before. So... I really like this one, and again, you really can't, uh, really picking up all of these at this point where everything's on sale uh, is a pretty good time to do so, because you never know when another sale like this is going to pop up. Number three. So, pros and cons is one that I have a lot of really fun with, because I got to play this one at its original convention debut, PAX East 2018. And the con part of pros and cons is very much about the convention. And you basically are attending EMAC, the Eastern Moon Sea Adventuring Convention, uh, which is essentially PAX. And that's what this whole encounter and adventure is. You are going through a convention. It's designed for tier one, so basically new players. And it's fun for me. I actually got to play with a group of brand new D&D &D players who had never really played before. So it was a good time. And it starts with basically you're all here for the on behalf of this guy, Strelaman, who's like a wizard and he wants to get you to do stuff for him. So things kind of start off where the lines are insane. So you have to deal with the terrible lines to get into the convention. Uh, then you need to then there's a, the chance to get swag, right? So you can get some free swag. But there are cosplaying goblins trying to take all the swag. Then... Strelaman wants to get into this exclusive panel where Volo is holding a panel because he wants to heckle him from the crowd and he wants you to find a way to sneak him into this panel. Then there is a VIP lounge that's supposed to have some pretty cool stuff, but to get there, you have to go through dungeons and puzzles. And then lastly, uh, at the end, if you manage to do it, Strelaman will give you some cool stuff. And I like that the story reward is a metal pin that shows that you were there which is very much on par with like penny arcade stuff for PAX conventions. So this one is a lot of fun. It is very different from most adventures. I don't think we, act, we might've done combat versus the cosplaying goblins, but the most fun we had was trying to get access to the VIP lounge because that was like a big trap filled puzzle dungeon. And I really enjoyed that. So I think you would have a lot of fun playing this. And if you've ever been to conventions, playing through this is going to, feel like uh you know a return to form and honestly we can't go to conventions so this might be the closest thing you can have number two 
Giant Diplomacy. I don't know what it is, but I just really love this one because it's goofy. And I've told you before that I like mini games within a, an adventure, and this has a bunch of them. And some interesting puzzles as well. And one of the coolest story rewards, which I'll explain what those are. So this is obviously 92 four and a half star ratings, best platinum seller. And basically the storyline is you are trying to um, basically get this uh, giant, this ogre over to your side to help kind of weaken the forces of a giant who's terrorizing the region. And it leads into a series of different adventures. So one of the first ones is you need to talk to like a pixie or some sort of fairy and they have you answer a riddle, and then they have you solve a puzzle, which is a tangram, which if you're not familiar what those are, I'll, I'll, talk, I'll show you in a second. Uh, and then you have to get into this contest with this ogre, or it's, maybe it's an Etten, I forget. But basically it comes down to you need to beat him in some challenges. And one of them is, I think, hog ups, which is basically bench pressing pigs. Another one is a drinking contest, and the last one is a boar dog eating contest. So there are actually stats and rules for how you can see how you stack up against this guy. So if I were to go over here and take a look, see pig ups, it's, it's deadlifts with pigs. There's checks that you need to make. There is, uh, what is this? Oh, a creature must knock down a brick wall. That was a street of uh, feet of strength. Uh, then you had to drink in between them. And then there was the whole hog, which was eating boar dogs, um, which was pretty interesting. And then that uh, lets you continue on. And then if I were to scroll down, you can see the story reward. The one that I like the most is here, Seder training, which is part of the adventure. Prince Thornacious has heard more of your great deeds through his servant, Blasios. The latter invites you to come on a vision quest with him in the Forgotten Forest. If you spend five downtime days to engage in revelry, seeking out your inner self, once, if you fail a saving throw against poison, you may call upon your fate teachings to succeed on the saving throw instead. What I really liked about this is in theory, at any point in any of the character's adventuring career, they could spend five downtime days to get access to a satyr training to then be able to use this to succeed on a poison saving throw if necessary. And then again, at some point later on, go on another vision quest and do that. The tangrams I was going to mention to you are basically you are given. Let me see if I can show you here. Uh, basically, puzzle pieces like this. And I don't want to show you what it is, but you're basically given this. And uh, the DM tells you, OK, the fairy wants you to make a house or a kitten or something like that. And you need to take those shapes and rearrange them into like a cat or a kitten or a house or whatever it is. And depending on if you do it within the time that the fairy allows, then you get the move on with the story. Number one. Contact. And this is probably my favorite. I have such fond memories of playing this. And unfortunately, I don't believe part two or part three of these series ever came out. And this is actually, I got a chance to play this with uh, Al who wrote it. Uh, he ran it for me and my friends and we got to play it at PAX Unplugged in 2017 when it premiered, which was pretty awesome. And it is, as it states, uh, the Beholder Core. It's part of the Beholder Core series. I mentioned them earlier in Mole Master. Well, basically uh, a Beholder ship crashed in the mountains and if part of an archaeological dig it's been uncovered so not only do you have to be you you are besieged by the beholder core to find this you get to travel into a far realm beholder ship and deal with all of that so it's very obviously alien and far realm in technology there are a bunch of beholders and beholder like things to interact with as you travel through it and it ends like any good spaceship-based encounter should with a self-destruct sequence that you either need to stop or evacuate before it explodes. And the sequence to stop the explosion is like a cool math logic puzzle, which was a lot of fun, and we had a blast playing through it, and I can't recommend this enough. I would love to see the final two versions of this come out, uh, because I think it was supposed to originally be a trilogy, but la sadly... Uh, it never happened as far as I can tell. It's also tier three, right? So that's 11 to 15 or 11 to 16 as far as the, uh, so it's higher level campaign. And again, uh, I would love to see more of this in the future. So 
Anyway, folks, that is my top 10 D&D 5e Adventure League modules. I'm sure there's a ton of really good ones that I missed. And again, a lot of these were ones that I had read before in the past and had either gotten a chance to play or heard from good friends who had played them. So that's where a lot of these came from. Or they were just silly, and I really liked the concept. So... Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Did I miss any good Adventure League modules out there, ones that you've played? I really haven't played anything recently since I did the epic for Waterdeep uh, Dragon Heist was really the last most recent one I played. And because uh, I hadn't really gotten a chance to play at any other conventions, and then we obviously had COVID, so I haven't played any of the stuff from the more recent season, so I don't know if it's worth it. Oh, you know what? I did play the epic for um, Baldur's Gate Descent to Avernus. I got to play that at D&D Live. So that was the last epic that I was able to play. So let me know your thoughts again in the comments down below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I would really appreciate it if you did so. We're approaching 70,000 subscribers now. So we're getting closer and closer to that 100K, hopefully for my birthday in July. And a shout out to my patrons over on Patreon for continuing to support me and the channel and for voting for top 10 Adventure League modules to be the topic for today. So if you're looking to get involved with Nerd Immersion and help decide the future of content here on the channel, joining the Patreon is the best way to do so because they get to vote every week or every two weeks rather to figure out what the top 10 topics are going to be. I do gather anytime someone throws out a top 10 list you know, idea, I do put it on a list and then I use that to propagate the, the polls that they get to vote on. Uh, so don't worry if you suggested something. It's somewhere in my big long list of top tens. But if you want to help influence thing one, things one way or another, Patreon's the best way to do so. So thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.